Hey everyone, I'm Alan Furstenberg. And I'm Mark Tucker, and welcome to Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. Man, oh man. Mark, I don't know about you. I am exhausted. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I kind of am the same. I, I know that we've been, you know, holding down our, our daily full-time what we're doing, and then we've been working on some things on the side. Um, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> I don't know. Do, should we talk a little bit about that? Sure. You know, because I know, I mean, what we've been doing on the side is all pretty interesting. And, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, we'll talk about some of it more again in the future. But, um, yeah, sure. So uh, why don't you start? What have you been up to? Well, so uh, been you know diving into artificial intelligence and and different model types, whether it be um, large language models or um, other things that we've you know already come in contact with as uh, voice developers. Uh, you know things like uh, language models used for you know natural language understanding and tense mm -hmm. and and stuff. So just kind of trying to get, uh, jump into that and understand how they relate and and as part of that process, I really wanted to understand clearly the different concepts and so that that in order to do that i created a, a card deck an ai card deck um, um so it's called ai explorer cards of discovery cards of discovery i like it so so these would be actual cards you know uh, playing size cards that yeah you know... yeah so 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 a, a, a deck of cards right now i've got um a digital download and i'm uh, waiting for my first proof copy of the actual deck of cards to to see how that goes, and so um, available now would be to to access the digital download, and and maybe in the future in a, a few weeks, uh, we'll I'll I'll know if uh, it's going to be uh, worth it to go ahead and make the the deck of cards. So maybe I'll make that uh, available as well for for people, uh, so they'll have both options. So. Before we dive into um, talking about the cards specifically and and how I uh, came about with that, there is um, probably well, let's do a promo about okay. uh, some some sort of offer for for listeners. Um, so you know, hang through this uh, this episode of the podcast, and that uh, towards the end, um, there will be a special promo coupon code for you to get uh, you know get access to it. I'll, t I'll tell you more details about what the code is and how much you get off later on in the, in the episode. Very cool. So, so hang in there. So, um, so while people, while, while folks are, are waiting for that, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, so I, I guess even for starts, how many cards are we talking about here? So the deck has 30 cards. Um, basically half the cards are definitions of different AI concepts. Uh -huh. And uh, the other ones are specifically different types of models, um, and okay. you know, one of the, one of them is a large language model. Now, it's interesting with, or one of the challenges, I guess, is with a deck of cards is that there's not a lot of space on a card, and so I really wanted to have on the front of the card um, some sort of a an image or a diagram or chart, something that would would be easy to look at and kind of like, okay, I kind of get what's going on. And then if you flip the card over. It either has the definition or has a summary of what the model does, kind of how the model, uh, what what the model is trained on, and hmm. an example of uh, for those things that are models you know, where you could go, for example, on Hugging Face and look up a specific model, so that you could then try out that concept yourself. Now, a whole pile of things there that that sounded great. So, so the first is you've got an illustration yes. that kind of you know, so for people who uh, aren't necessarily going to dive into text. You get something that that visually illustrates it right off the bat. Right. You know, you see it, you can get a, get a glanceable, rough idea of what what you're talking about. But I think it's it's really neat that you're then pointing to concrete examples, and the ones you're pointing to are hugging face examples because these are really accessible. Really, you know, everyone can get access to them and actually go and play with them. So this isn't, you know, an abstract, you know, this is an LLM we've heard about, but we don't know anything about it. You're pointing to stuff where there's, you know, detailed information, where they can learn more, where there is a community around them, and you're pointing them right to it. That's amazing. Right. And a lot of times is that you can just uh, 
do a sample right there in the browser, right on Hugging Face. Um, you know, we've talked about uh, you know, Jupyter Notebooks and being able to go through. There's, there's, there's you can definitely dive in at a, a, a more of a you know deeper level or pull those models into LangChain or into other things. So you can use the model in lots of different ways, but in a lot of cases, you can just try it right there in the browser and kind of like, oh, this is the, this is the input, this is the output. It actually links you to um, what what data, well, what models being used and what data was used to generate that um, that model. And so you have a, a, a lot better understanding of kind of what's going on behind the scenes too. No, that's going to, you know, and again, that's really important is, you know, I don't think we're, you're not aiming this at AIML people. You're aiming this at people who are hearing lots and lots about AI and hearing the term AI model being tossed around. Mm -hmm. And this is saying, you know, hey, here's, here's what we're talking about when we say that. And here's how you can start getting your feet wet. Not, you know, you don't need to dive in. You can learn more. You can become uh, AI literate. That, 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 that's true. Yeah. So um, it starts you from the beginning, like, you know, what is a token? And you hear about you've got so many tokens that you can use for, or how big is the context? Or what's, uh, you know, what is a vector database? We talked a little bit about that on a previous episode. Or, um, you know, what is um, a, an embedding? And how you know how is embedding used with large language model? What's a corpus? What's a you know just kind of talking about different concepts, and then it actually uh, gets into some specific models. Like, well, you've heard about sentiment analysis, but what is what does that mean? How what what kind of model would you use for sentiment analysis? Or um, in the world that we've dealt with for voice, uh, there is. Uh, you know, text classification and token classification. That's where we get intents and and entities and 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 things like that. So it's just talking about all the, these different types of models and uh, and concepts that are going to be important for you to you know kind of advance your journey uh, with AI. No, these are fantastic. And so there's there's fifteen of each. You said. 15 concepts, roughly 15 there's, models? there's, 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 there's one title card. Okay. There's yeah, 15 of one and 14 of the other. So okay. 30, 30 cards in total. Now, how did you, you pick them? How did you filter out which, you know, what to include, what not to include? How much of it was, you know, modeling your own journey into AI? Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that fascinated me about voice when I started back <clears throat> in 2016 was, I can train a model to do a certain thing. And I don't ne didn't necessarily have to understand all the complexities behind how that model got built. But I knew if I gave these inputs to a model, then I could do something to use that to, you know, in my Alexa skill to, to, to get, you know, to identify specific intents and then handle that intent to do certain processing. And so um, I drew from, you know, past experience, things that were important, um, and that's that's why I focused on uh, NLP, natural language processing, um, because that's a lot of of what we we do in the in the voice world is is around that concept. And so I kind of felt like I already had a, an anchor in that area, and I had already had some learning. So I pulled some of the, the things from my experience, and then you know I've been exploring AI like everyone else has been the last six months. Um, and I'm like, okay, I've got this concept. And I'm like, okay, I know what a token is generally, but what when when they talk about a token in the context of models and and you know using those for embeddings and things, well, what does that mean? So I was trying to some of them were reterming or kind of, kind of adding a dimension to words that already existed, and yeah. some of them were brand new words. I'm like, a vector database? I don't know what a vector database is, and so I wanted to. You know, as I, I learned about those and understood those, I was like, okay, can I take that information and make it very concise uh, with a diagram and some text so that, um, you know, spend over 100 hours making these cards. So hopefully that somebody doesn't have to spend 100 hours getting up to speed on some of this stuff that they can do that in a much shorter uh, period of time. Yeah. Why cards? I'm curious. I don't know. I just... Card games. I don't know. I just had this fascination with cards. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's, I mean, it's not like there's a game associated with them. They're they're more like flashcards in that sense. Yeah. 
Okay. Something you could take with you and, you know, kind of um, you know, go through and refresh yourself on different topics and just, you know, we'll see how this, this deck uh, goes and how to expand that over time. And, uh, you know, who, who knows, we'll get more and more. Expansion packs. Expansion packs. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is very cool. You know, I, you, you had bounced a couple of the early designs off of me and I thought they were, it was a brilliant idea. And I really, really liked where you were going. And now with the, the final product, I think people will, uh, will get a lot out of it. You know, especially people who are really just feeling kind of lost in this whole AI world, you know. It's moving fast. Oh, it's moving really fast. Uh, so, so what was it like actually putting the cards together, putting the layout together, those sorts of things? We, um, we've talked we've talked in the past about um, publishing a book. Yeah. How is this compared to publishing a book? Well, it's it's really um, kind of funny. You know, you might laugh at the tools that I uh, I'm using to do this actually, but um, it's it's um, it's well, I had, I had um, I guess I've made card decks before, and there's a there's a online service that allows you to to do that, and you can provide you know either just the fronts or the backs or the front and the back. So I've I've gone through some you know different. Uh, I've done this before. So um, there are specific, you know, file dimensions for an image that you would use. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to actually make this as a card deck, um, then I want to go ahead and match that. My go-to tool for creating diagrams, whether it's architecture, you know, system diagrams for work or um, in a meeting, I just wanted to quick draw something up. I use PowerPoint. So actually, all the cards sense to me. <laughs> are made in PowerPoint. Um, it's it's got you know great tools for you know formatting text and alignment and and stuff. And I just I had to go in there and figure out how to make um, a custom sized slide that was big mm. enough that when you exported it out as an image, then it would uh, it would be the right size. Um, and I even had a template that I used that because like here's the the border of the card, but it, so it might you want it to go over in case it bleeds because here's the safe area. Here's yeah. the safe area for where text goes. Um, so I had that all, all set up, and I you know just kind of went through as I was going through topics and refining concepts and and uh, and stuff. Then I would just update the cards in the in the in the card deck, and. I did use um, LLMs at different points in time to I, I wasn't summarize <laughs> and to, to modify. They weren't all generated um, that way, but there were times where I'm like, okay, I need two or three sentences that briefly talk about this, that include this concept, this concept, this concept. And then I'd pull some things out and re rephrase some things. But um, um, so, I, so, so there was some, and there's even a credit in it that uh, some of the text <laughs> was created with LLMs. I'm not hiding that. Okay. So very cool. This is an exciting project. I'm I love I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing how this uh how this plays out and how folks react to it. How many sales you got. Yeah. So uh yeah, it, it's uh, you know, been been pleasantly surprised uh with the reception so far and uh it's it's been nice to to see some feedback on it as well. Very good. So yeah, thanks for the opportunity. To, I thought it would be some a good topic uh Kind of some side project that's been you know taking time over the last uh, few months and uh, just wanted to share it here yep and if folks hang on you still have the discount code coming up that's true <laughs> so talk about your project you've got a project that uh is pretty cool it's well it's in a hot area and uh i, I think it's it's gonna be big you all well, yeah maybe uh i think actually the big note here is that it isn't my project mm-hmm um, you know, we've talked in the past about open source projects. You and I have both run our own open source projects. This was really the first time that I made a major contribution to an open source project. You know, I've, I've made little contributions in the past. I've opened PRs. I've submitted, you know, a few line to fix. This was the first one where I made a big contribution. And this was to Langchain. Specifically, the JavaScript Langchain library. Well, so okay, so that you're kind of underplaying it a little bit, but this is a hot library. They're yeah. very active. There's lots going on. It's in constant uh, state of improvement. It's one of those things that um, 
it's kind of a gauge of how fast things are are moving and progressing. All the different contributions and changes and things that have happened to to Langchain just even in the last two months. Um, I, there's there's just crazy. Yeah, no, it is. It has been crazy. The library each there. So there are two libraries. Right. There's the Python library, which is just known as Langchain, and there's Langchain JS, which is a, a TypeScript JavaScript library that usually lags behind the Python library. It's not as complete as the Python one is. Right. And we've talked about Langchain before, but broadly speaking, these libraries are um, attempting to create a standard interface and standard paradigm for a number of AI and LLM things. And I use things really broadly because it includes things like standard interfaces to vector databases, right? Uh, standard interfaces to different embedding models. But it's also including things like, how do you represent a document in a standard way? How do you represent a prompt and a template to a prompt in a standard way? Yeah. And then more advanced things like, okay, how do we chain these together so that they build into something greater? How do we, you know, use a prompt and get the results of that prompt and feed it into an interpreter and get the results of that interpreter and feed it into uh, an API, you know, how do we, how do, how do we you use tools? A... How do you use agents? How do you make, right. how, do, how do you write code that makes it easy to hook all this stuff together and get to a solution? Right. And more importantly, in a lot of cases, let's write that code for you. You know, yeah. so that you don't need to figure out, well, what is going to be the best prompt to do this? There are pre-designed prompts for you. You don't need to figure out the best way to search a uh, an Airtable, for example. That interface has already been built for you. So lots of things have already been built. Um, what, you know, one of the, the big things that was released uh, relatively recently at IO was access to the Palm model from Google mm -hmm. through uh, the Google Cloud platform. So this is a enterprise ready access to Google's leading uh, models. Um, and it's offered through what they refer to as their, their Vertex AI platform, which is yeah. It's basically, it's it's an existing platform that they've had for a while that offered access to models, but now they're offering access to Palm and that's a big deal. Right. Um, so as I, I've been a trusted tester on it. So as soon as it was public, as soon as the, the API for it was public, I got right to work in creating the Langchain.js access to that API. And it, it was interesting. It involved some challenges. The mental model of how Langchain is approaching some things, like the chat interface, is somewhat different than what Google's model is in the API. So there needed to be some remapping and some rethinking and you know some, some back and forth with the project administrators about the best way to do that. Um, but over the course of, you know, in the end, uh, a, a few days at the end, we hammered them out and uh, put out two releases that included the uh, the text model, the chat model, and the embeddings model that are currently supported. Very nice. So uh, so people who have existing solutions could choose to say, oh, I'm going to swap out this model for, for Palm. I'm going to swap out this vector database for Vertex. Well, um, not not quite yet on that. Not last quite yet. Part. All right. So so there is a vector database in Vertex called the Matching Engine. Really clever name there. <laughs> um, that that is the next step. There have been a number of people asking for uh, the Match Engine as uh, a vector database. So that's the next thing we're working on. Um, and I say we because it is a it is a community effort here. You know, it's not just me handing stuff over; it's me working with others 
some of whom understand the Vertex AI match engine better than I do, others whom understand Langchain better than I do. Right. So, you know, it's a it's a group effort here um, in, in putting this out. But yes, what it basically means is, you know, if you are currently using OpenAI and you want to switch to uh, the Palm model, there's very little that you need to change to switch models. Right. You basically need to change the class and that's about it. Well, congratulations. That That is huge. I, I think that is, um, I'm a big proponent of open source as I know that you are and, you know, being able to, you're kind of, we're at this, this spot where you had access to something that, that and a certain level of knowledge and a desire to make that available to those that are using uh, LangChain and LangChain JS uh, specifically, and um, so you went ahead and, and just uh, you know, did it and, and and jumped into that. And uh, do you have an estimate about approximately how many hours that uh, of of work for your contributions to this? No, I don't actually. I mean, I <laughs> I literally um, opened the. Uh, the issue report the day that it was announced and that was you know the day that was the day of io that right. evening i opened the issue and i think i had the pr ready for it about a week later the the first pull request and then it took another i've already lost track of the timing there it took another week or two <laughs> to iron out some details and go back and forth and you know there was a lot of code refactoring at, at one point they kind of said you know you're i i had created this uh the the chat implementation and he said why doesn't this look like any of the other chat implementations and i said what do you mean it looks exactly like this the open ai chat implementation they said no 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 no. that's using a chat model for the text you know as if it was a text model the chat implementations over in this other directory. So bunches of refactoring, you know, so, so there was, there was a bit, there was a learning curve in here. So at least dozens of hours. Oh yes. On the other hand though, you know, um, for the embedding model, the, the final one that I did, that really was only about two hours, including all the documentation from from when I started coding it to when I I submitted the the pull request on it, it's it's nice when you have kind of already a framework or a structure and some examples to to kind of compare against. They'll make oh, okay, this is what this is doing. This is how you would do it in in yeah. you know this other well, thing. So that the, that does help. The other advantage, and I think this really worked to my my favor, was that I had in building both the the text model and the chat model for it. I had realized there was a huge chunk of code that was identical between them. And I was reasonably sure it was going to be identical for the embedding model as well. So I spent a good chunk of time making it its own class, making it its own structure, ref you know, refactoring things. So this thing was able to support other models kind of standing on its own. Yeah. And then once I did, and I looked at the embedding model, I'm like, oh, I just need to call that with this information and turn the result back into an array and that's it you know it wow. was yeah really pretty straightforward in the end but this is true about lots of good programming that we do is it takes some early thought and you know you you think about how to do it right and you do that and you test it make sure that it's working solidly and then when something new comes along it's just like, oh yeah, I just leverage that. It's it's mostly already done, right? Well, and it's it's interesting because because not only do you did you have to understand the the Google API and the basics of Lang Chain, but then you also start getting into you're like, oh, okay, this is you know th has this additional features, or this can be used in this other way, and so it does take um, a little bit to dive deep enough into the framework. To, to understand how things fit into that framework. Yes. No, it, it does take, you know, I can understand why people who, why people would be intimidated about wanting to contribute to 
a big open source project like this because you know it's intimidating you don't know what you know you don't necessarily know everything that's going on in it yeah. you don't know how everything fits together and somewhere somebody you hope does have an idea on how everything fits together um and fortunately those people you know step in and say look you know as long as you're willing to do the bulk of the work we'll help you you know guide you so yeah we'll we'll guide you we'll help you figure out the rough points and, and sand down the rough points and uh and make this look like it's part of the rest of the system. So what would you say to people that are are kind of playing with the idea of, of uh, participating specifically in LangChain? Did you find that to be a positive experience? It was an amazingly positive experience. The community is fantastic, both, um, you know, upfront from the moment I opened the, the issue there were people jumping in saying, can't wait to see this, you know, love to see it. Um, one of the core maintainers very quickly contacted me and said, really looking forward to this. When you submit it, make sure you let me know so I can take a look as quickly as I can. Um, you know, they were very responsive with uh, where they saw issues and concerns that they had. And, you know, uh, discussing with me my approach versus their approach you know it, there was yeah. it wasn't a lot of nope this is how we do it you're wrong it was a i want to move this more towards what our standard is what's what what what's the issue there um and discussing what their vision was and what my vision was and and where the right balance was going to be um so no positive experience from beginning to end if you are you know using langchain or want to use langchain and there's something that it doesn't do that you want it to do open the request ask you know talk about it on the discord ask people what they think look at the examples that are there and just start working. You know, there will be, there's a community out there to help you. And I think this is true on almost any good open source project. Yeah, that's true. That's been my experience. Well, great. I, I think that that's really exciting. And uh, uh, it's kind of fun that you, you've you kind of done this little piece of something really big. Uh, and now it's going to go forward and other people can contribute to it. Or it, That uh, is both expand. wonderful and scary in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I now need to stalk the the trouble reports to see if anything's wrong with my code. I'm like, you know what? I don't need to stalk it. Other people okay. can figure out my code if they need to. You know, right. if there's a bug, we will figure out the bug and fix it. Right. And it's a, we will figure out the bug and fix it. That's that's what open source is about. That's true. Well, very nice. Thanks for, for sharing that uh, that experience. Very cool um, project that you were able to to work on. Thank you. And speaking of sharing, why don't you share with folks uh, your offer? All right. So for the first 20 listeners who are interested in the uh, AI cards that I created, the digital download. Um, so it's a PDF of all of the different uh, Im card images. What uh, what you can do is you can go to either the you know, podcast link or to YouTube, and there is a link to the AI cards, the digital download. And when uh, when you bring it up, there's a spot for entering a coupon code. And if you type in two voice devs, um, then you'll be able to get 50% off on, uh, on the download. So first 20 people, 50% off, two voice devs, capital T, capital V, capital D, and- uh, All one word, no spaces? All one word, no spaces. And that is the promo code. 50%. That is fantastic. So love, you know, I, I really hope people do take advantage of this and would love to hear what, what folks think. I'm sure you will as well. Yeah. You can, uh, you know, contact us all the different places that we are on, uh, on Twitter, on, on LinkedIn, um, and just uh, comments below, however you want to do it. Uh, and we'll, we'll get back with you and, Hopefully you'll be able to, you know, either use the the Lang chain uh, functionality for uh, Google Vertex and or uh, do some AI cards of discovery.
And whatever you do, we'd love to hear about it. And we'll talk about it another time on Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. Take care, Alan. Take care, Mark. Hope next week is calmer than this one. <laughs> Probably will be.